This episode of the Cloudcast is sponsored by ServiceNow. ServiceNow is changing the way people work. With a service orientation towards the activities, tasks, and processes that make up day-to-day work life, ServiceNow helps the modern enterprise operate faster and be more scalable than ever before. To learn more about the enterprise cloud built to manage everything as a service, please visit www.servicenow.com. And now, on to the show. Cloudcast Media presents, from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to the Cloudcast. Once again, coming to you live from the massive studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, Today's, you know, we've always talked about all sorts of aspects of cloud computing, and I think sometimes we find that, um, you know, some parts of, of cloud computing tend to get uh, lots and lots of hype and buzz and so forth, and yet there's a big, big market that's out there. There's a lot of a lot of companies doing interesting things. There's a lot of segments of the market that are, um, you know, maybe don't get as many headlines as, as they could, but they're still, you know, doing really innovative stuff. They are, uh, you know, serving customers. They've got super happy customers, um, and so we thought today would be a really good opportunity to make sure that we're not just scratching the surface of cloud computing. We want to talk about, you know, some people that are doing really, really cool stuff. And so today, uh, very excited to have a couple of couple of folks from DigitalOcean, uh, Mitch Wayner, co-founder of DigitalOcean, and uh, Nick Van Wiggeren, uh, storage engineering manager from DigitalOcean. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. So uh, so first off, you guys are, uh, you're up in New York City. Uh, welcome to the show. Give us a little bit of your background and a little bit of the, the story of, you know, your involvement at, uh, at DigitalOcean. So I'll, st- I'll start. I'll kick it off. Um, hi, my name is Mitch Weiner, um, co-founder of DigitalOcean, and I run the, the, the marketing team here. Um, so I've been with the company since day zero. And, you know, when we, when we created DigitalOcean, um, we, we were trying to solve a, a major pain point in the developer community. Um, at the time, there was no easy way to deploy your applications online. Um, the, the cloud providers that, that existed, you know, it, it, there was, there was too many steps. There was a lot of friction. Provisioning time was slow. So we basically created intuitive, seamless, um, experience for cloud, you know, for, for developers to deploy their applications in the cloud. Um, so, so that's, you know, when we basically decided to create, uh, DigitalOcean, um, and we launched in March of 2012, um, the company like slowly ramped up and it wasn't until January 2013 when we uh, launched our all SSD cloud server plan starting at $5 a month that the business um, really took off on a whole new trajectory and um, we essentially became an overnight success, uh, quote unquote, um, in the developer community. And, um, you know, now we're, we're focused heads down on, on evolving and maturing our platform to cater to uh, larger applications, uh, uh, developers with with business needs, and we're we're now slowly beginning to move up market, and uh, it's exciting, you know, because we're 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 trying to to truly innovate within the the cloud computing space by taking these complex systems and architectures and and, and distilling them down into into seamless simple and intuitive experiences for the developer. And, and that's what ultimately what we're really excited about um, day to day here. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you all. Um, I started here a little over two years ago. Uh, I've been a DigitalOcean customer for about three. Um, and so uh, a couple years ago, I saw some, uh, some hiring ads, applied as a software engineer, um, started pretty quickly after that. Um, after uh, about a year of being a software engineer here, I transitioned to uh, engineering management and I've been running the uh, the storage team ever since. Uh, so this is the uh, the first product we've released of uh, hopefully many. Um, and so uh, pretty excited to be here. Yeah, no, that's that's very very cool. I you know, like I said in the intro, you know, cloud tends to mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, you know, for some it's uh, you know a, a place to you know consume an application like SaaS or something like that. For others, you know, it's an augmentation of IT. You guys have always gone after developers. It's you know it's been very clear. It's it's we we want to target developers and we want to target kind of this this very experience centric uh, way of going after them. Like what what does that ultimately mean? Like what's been the you know at the end of the day, a lot of the underlying parts are you know it's compute and it's storage and it's networking. But like what have, what's been the thinking in terms of you know how you how you target you know what a, a developer's problem is. 
how to simplify things for them. Tell us a little bit about what, what that mindset is. Yeah, I, I can speak to that a little bit uh, from an engineering perspective and then maybe pass it over to Mitch. Um, you know, I, I started uh, as, a, as an individual developer using DigitalOcean. Um, and so for me, what, that, what it means is kind of making products that uh, developers want to use and making products powerful enough that developers can build other products on top of, right? So we start at the bottom and really curate an experience that um, – means other people can do really cool stuff and other people want to do cool stuff on top of DigitalOcean. So when I work, my day-to-day is kind of focusing on, you know, making sure that um, we build friendly and powerful tools um, that um, kind of enable a generation of people to build SaaS products on top of and, and to build other cool stuff um, kind, of, kind of on top of that as a, as a fundamental building block um, for other, other cool stuff to be made. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the way we kind of describe, uh, you know, the cloud internally um, is, is, you know, in terms of like the core cloud products, it's what you said. It's, you know, it's compute, which we have with, with our drop of product uh, storage. Um, and as Nick said, he, you know, we launched our block storage service not too long ago. And then finally networking that ties both together and provides a highly available environment. So, so those are the core, you know, building blocks that we are, are heads down focused on like simplifying and, and, and just streamlining that, that entire setup and, and configuration experience for developers. And then ultimately what, what we want to do is we want to layer on top, um, different as a service, uh, solutions like like metrics and monitoring that will uh, enable developers to you know just better manage and, and and better scale their system. So you know that's that's ultimately what we quote unquote call cloud internally. Um, sort of that that it's that entire picture for us. It's you know it's on demand. It's accessible. It's intuitive. It's easy. Um, so that's that's how we more or less define it. Yeah. So. Um... You know, it's it, a lot of a lot of cloud providers. You, you can you can you, know, you go look at an analyst report, or you you, know, you look at somebody's website, and um, you know to a certain extent, it looks like classical software. I mean, it's it's pages of, of feature lists and and you know lots of stuff. And you guys have have grown to a point where um, you know depending on on who you talk to, but I mean, uh, you know, there's various surveys out there that say that you guys are you know second largest. Uh, you know, cloud provider, hosting provider in terms of numbers, like you guys have gotten really big, like you said, sort of an overnight success, you know, over the last three or four years without this massive feature list. Like what, what does that, what does that say about the market? I mean, does that sort of say that, you know, developers as a whole, you know, still feel very comfortable with a lot of, you know, they'll do it themselves. They're going to bring the tools they love, or is it, is it a little more of like, Hey, you know, even, even the cloud things can get way too complicated or, you know, I mean, is there, is there anything to, you know, this idea that you can grow really fast and you can deliver really powerful stuff without, you know, just a laundry list of features per se. Yeah. I mean, when we started, we only had, you know, one product, uh, again, our, our, uh, compute, um, uh, instance and, uh, you know, w- what we call our droplet and, you know, it, it, it simply was was CPU. It, you know, had had RAM um, and it had a, a local disk, and so you know, our, our developers on our platform, um, be, you know, got really creative with you know layering on top open source software to help you know better configure and and set up and um, and manage their environment. So, um, to your point, yes, they want to. Um, they want to use the tools and services that they ultimately love using. Um, and we're, we're very fortunate to be in a market that's, that's one of the fastest growing markets in the world. Uh, developers, software engineers specifically are, you know, that is the fastest growing professional segment in the world. Um, and you know, there's this, there's this term that, you know, software is eating the world and ultimately, so, you know, developers are, are building that software. So, you know, our goal is to be the underlying platform, um, for all software to, to run on top of. And, right. you know, right. it, it, it's, and, and, and it goes back to that, you know, you know, it goes back to the, to the objective of building a, a product that developers ultimately love using, because if they love using a product and service, they're going to naturally and organically bring that into the work pra- uh, workplace environment and use those tools and services to, to empower and enable their businesses to grow. Right. And to build on top of what uh, what Mitch is saying, I think you know one of the one of the reasons we've been able to grow so fast and and that kind of thing is because people really do like to use DigitalOcean. The the positive sentiment is crazy. You know, I'll, I'll walk down the street on my DigitalOcean T shirt and 
I'll get recognized and it's, it's always high fives and thumbs up and stuff like that. And, um, you know, the, the feature list might be different. Um, but at the end of the day, I think a ton of people just really love DigitalOcean and, and that helps bring more people to the platform. Yeah. And I'll just add one more thing. You know, one of our core differentiators is our community. Um, we built an, an incredible community around our, our brand and around our product. Um, we, we believe in, in nurturing and educating and, um, continuing to fo- uh, foster that community. Um, and, and, you know, we, we've been able to, uh, onboard hundreds of thousands of developers globally. Um, so we're not just a, a local community brand where, you know, we built a, uh, international community. So it's, it's really exciting to, to see online, especially like, uh, developers uh, go on the record on Twitter or they'll blog about DigitalOcean and they'll use the word love to describe our product. And, you know, you don't find that many products and services online, specifically cloud products that are, you know, are, are commonly associated with the word love. So we're in a very unique position to, to leverage that and continue to, to drive uh, uh, further growth and innovation. Yeah, and I, and, you know, <laughs> don't, don't take it the wrong way. I wasn't trying to imply that sort of you guys weren't doing uh, features I, it was to me it was more of a um you know sometimes there is incredible power in um you know not overwhelming people with stuff you guys uh, you know if you look if you look at community forums if you look at just you know the 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 depth of the documentation you guys do a really really good job of going like here's a bunch of just tutorials to get you started and it's you know you, you can start from any level you want it's here's how you get going quickly it's all about you know essentially you know, enabling people. It's not, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm you with education. I want to get you started. I want to get you doing stuff. I want to make you productive. And, um, you know, I, I think like you said, it, it comes out in your community wanting to work with you in, in people, you know, giving you that sentiment, which is really, really powerful. That's exactly right. It's all about helping the developer at the end of the day, enabling them to succeed. And, um, if you, if you're able to do that, great things happen. Right now you guys recently announced, uh, and, and, uh, you know, Nick, you're, you're driving this, you recently announced a block storage offering. Um, you know, what's the, what's the, you, you know, I hate to sort of say like, what's the reasoning for doing it? Because, you know, block storage is a, you know, it's a kind of a critical building block, especially for, you know, certain high performance applications, but you know, what made it the right time to do it now and, and give us some of the, you know, sort of the underlying technology, you know, underpinnings behind it. Yeah, totally. Um, so, you know, as for why, I mean, one of the biggest reasons is um, our users wanted it. Um, if you looked at our user voice page, which we use for product suggestions, uh, block storage was far and away the most requested feature. Um, and it, it meets a kind of price to storage ratio that um, we couldn't we couldn't do with just droplets. Um, so now that you can add storage on to any size of any droplet, you get the ability to store a bunch of data and, and stuff like that at a, a much lower cost than to buy a bigger droplet. Um, and as, as far as technology, um, you know, I can't speak too much to that, um, but it's, it's backed by pure SSDs, you know, and a, a bunch of Linux servers connected over to the, net, the network, uh, in the few regions that we've got block storage out. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's scalable. We can, we can build it up, we can scale it out and stuff like that to make sure that we're kind of meeting the needs of, uh, of our customers. Okay. And, and in terms of just sort of, you know, things people can run on top of it, it, it'll support sort of all the standard way to do, you know, whether they're, you know, just raw blocks or file systems and, and things like that on top of it. Yeah. So, you know, we give you a uh, raw block device on your VM and uh, you can kind of uh, do with it um, whatever meets your use case. You know, typically we do see people putting file systems on top. Um, you know, most most databases and stuff, MySQL run on top of uh, file systems. And then there's raw file storage, you know, people using it to run their own uh, object storage is actually backed by DigitalOcean storage. Um, but it's, you know, it's uh, it's low level enough that you can build pretty much anything on top. Yeah, cool. And it's you, you guys are getting it rolled out. To, I mean, the other thing that's always interesting to me about DigitalOcean is, is how quickly you guys are rolling out new locations and, and new new sites. This is rolling out sort of globally uh, on a as quickly as you can, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, feature parity across all of our data centers is something that's that's pretty important to us. You know, we, we don't want uh, people to be constrained by certain features and having to do some sort of, you know, Venn diagram of what they need in what region. Um, so we wanted to launch with, you know, East, West Coast, USA and a, a Europe option first. And, and we're looking at, at new sites all the time to see kind of uh, what makes the most sense for us next. Yeah. But, um, so, Mitch, talk a little bit about this. Um, you know, we see, we're seeing this sort of race between 
uh, you know, cloud providers to say, hey, I've, I've put a location in this new part of the world, in this new country, in Europe, in, in wherever. Like, what, is that, what does that really mean? I know there's, there's aspects of that that are, you know, obviously geography for latency. You want to be as close to your customers as possible or, or their customers. Um, but what do you hear from people? I mean, how, how far do we think we'll see this? Are we going to see, you know, people having to put a, a data center in every country for, for data sovereignty locations? Or, you know, is, is regionality going to be going to be fine for, for most customers? Like, where's that trend going? Yeah, I mean, um, there's there's a lot of variables um, to consider, right? Like, if there are data laws and data privacy laws that exist within countries, um, for example, in several, several countries in the EU, um, we, we need to try to abide by those laws and, and host, um, you know, data center regions in, in those specific countries. Um, and in other scenarios like India, um, you know, there's a huge market for us there. Like, you know, there's a, a tremendous amount of uh, of developers, software developers in India um, that, that are quickly, you know, uh, scaling up. Um, and, and that will soon become the largest developer market in the world. So it absolutely makes sense for us to, to cater to those developers and provide them with the best connectivity possible. So that means, like, being there locally is important. So, you know, there is um, – there, there are connect, uh, connectivity – reasons for for going into uh various uh countries um depending upon whether or not our customers demand it um or or request it um and there's also you know again like you said like there's uh some some uh you know regulations and and laws surrounding data privacy that we we try to abide by right right and it's obviously there's a there's a balance there between you know cost of building these things they're not uh they're not cheap they don't come quickly and and then being able like you said to go serve serve big markets and and be close to them um so give us a sense i mean a, a lot of the times you, you hear quite a few headlines about uh you know some of the some of the large cloud providers uh but give us a sense for for people that maybe get overwhelmed with some of those headlines versus you know maybe not knowing as much about digitalocean like Give us, uh, I don't know, a story or two from from some of your developers that either have moved over or have you know stuck around for a while that that you know might sort of surprise people about you know what it's like to to interact with DigitalOcean, the types of services, the types of support, or you know just a cool story that people are like, hey, look, I built I built my business on top of this, and I didn't think I could do it anywhere else. Yeah, I, I can start out a little bit with that and maybe pass it over to Mitch. I mean, something that we, some feedback that we get from customers all the time um, is uh, about our support team. Um, you know, uh, we've, we've tried to share this with the whole company to, you know, to kind of make it known. But uh, I'd say on a weekly basis almost, we get customers writing in and saying, you know, your support team is great. Re- response times are great. And they, they continuously go above and beyond so making sure that I'm set up, I'm stable and stuff like that. And, and that's something that's very important to us because um, it's what it's what keeps people on DigitalOcean. You know, in a certain sense, a lot of the cloud has become a bit of a commodity. Um, and by going the extra mile around things like support and around things like documentation and tutorials, um, we draw people in and we get them started um, and we help them scale um, and we, we kind of help them stay up and stay running on DigitalOcean. Um, and that's, that's really kind of what, uh, what separates us uh, from a lot of other cloud hosting providers. Yeah. Yeah, so support is certainly something that I think we uh, we don't necessarily do a good job of uh, over communicating uh, publicly, but it is it is a core differentiator for us, and and you know we one of our core values is love, and we always try to go above and beyond for the customers, so that that's reflected in our support service. Um, uh, another uh, interesting uh, highlight is is, is probably our uh, reliability. Um, our platform is extremely reliable. Um, you know, we have a 99.99% uh, SLA, um, and we, we try to abide by it. And, uh, you know, if, if you, if you hear from the industry, mo- most developers would say that we have a very reliable and stable platform. Um, so we, we're very proud of that. We're going to release a, uh, real time, um, uptime uh, page that will represent that uh, on our website soon that we're hopefully ho- hopefully looking to launch that uh, by the end of this year um, so you know there's there's certainly our, our you know support and our reliability but I think again going back to what I was saying before about the overall experience um, you know if it, it 
contrasting us against other uh, providers in the market. It's like we, you know, we're a product first business. Like we, we see through, you know, uh, a UX lens. Um, we really try to ensure that we're minimizing unnecessary steps. We're minimizing the un- unnecessary friction for developers to, you know, attach, configure, deploy, and, and architect their systems so that they, you know, have more time to write code and build their businesses instead of managing their infrastructure. Um, and, you know, we really uh, put design front and center at our business and, and as well as, like, our, our, um, our engineering uh, work. It's, it's, it's in every, you know, we consider in everything we do. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's a hard thing to do. It's, it's hard to present to to your end customer something that's that's simple because it means on the back end that that there's a lot of complexity and a lot of you know difficult decisions that got made and and um so yeah it's it's uh it's always to sort of be commended you know you guys you guys talked earlier on about you know you're seeing people build all sorts of interesting stuff all sorts of interesting businesses what um what sort of trends do you see from from your customers maybe your leading customers about you know the the types of applications they're building the types of uh, you know, interactions they're seeing from their customers that they're kind of giving you some feedback on and going, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to need help in some way with this stuff, or this is a trend that we're seeing, you know, keep this in mind as you, as you guys are building out what you do. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in some sense, this is definitely the, probably the biggest driver of uh, some of our roadmap items, you know, uh, networking is a primitive is one of the big things we're seeing from customers is a lot of kind of clustered databases and other, uh, systems come out, you know, like Docker, Docker networking and then those kinds of abstractions, it becomes very important for us to be able to drive, um, more complicated networking interactions with security groups and stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the, the big focus areas that we're, we're working on developing now just to enable people to go from, you know, a, a blog on one or two droplets, maybe a database and a, a web droplet to, you know, 10 or 15 with some sort of clustered storage system and, and stuff like that. Um, and actually networking ends up driving a lot of that because um, you need a way to securely link all of those uh, in, a, in a private sense. Um, and so that's, that's actually a big area that we're, uh, we're looking at now. Yeah. Do you, are you starting to see any reality to, you know, the, the hype around things like IOT and, and customers that are starting to build, you know, reality around that yet? I actually haven't seen a ton. I mean, the, the thing about IOT, a lot of what drives that is uh, software that runs, you know, on, on top of virtual machines. And, and I think that uh, a lot of what goes into helping that is, is just building out, um, you know, a, a better compute, a better storage and a better networking product um, to let people, you know, ingest that massive amount of data that something like IOT produces. Right. Right. No, absolutely. Well, let me let me ask you guys one last question, and we'll, we'll, then we'll wrap it up because because you guys are you guys are busy and and, uh, and moving forward. You guys are a you're an Andreessen Horowitz uh, backed company amongst your your venture uh, you know your venture partners. Uh, you know we, we've got a lot of folks that listen to the show that will tell us, hey, we we read you know we read the blogs from from Mark and Ben or we listen to their podcasts. Like, give us a sense of of what it's like to be a uh, you know an A sixteen Z company. Uh, you know, sort of the guidance you get from them and and um, you know, just what, what that experience has been like, uh, in terms of, of working with one of the really well-known, uh, well-connected VCs. So the experience has been incredible. I mean, they are certainly a very, very, very strong partner. So, um, if you're a startup and you're looking to raise capital, um, I would highly encourage you to go pitch a 16 Z. Um, they are, they are a great group of folks, uh, a brilliant group. Um, and what's, what's cool about working with them is that they, have staffed up their their company um, and and have essentially supporting departments that you can tap into. Um, so they have like you know they have a marketing and communications department. They have a a talent development department department. Um, they have a corp dev department. So like uh, you know departments with ten ten or, or more folks who are dedicated to supporting the portfolio companies. Um, and what's great is like they, their networks, you know, they're so, so each individual has a tremendous network and a tremendous background. So you're able to tap into those resources, um, as you scale to, you know, check references for a specific candidate or, um, you know, ask for, for help, uh, you know, uh, building out a, uh, a strategy for, for X, Y, Z, you know, it's just, it's incredible to be able to, um, have a, an investor who's, who's like almost like a second arm of your business to help you scale. So, you know, that's just like one of the, one of the best, um, you know, one of the top things that come to mind when I think about, you know, the support that a 16 provides. 
Yeah. And it let, lets you guys be more funk, a little more focused on the business, uh, it sounds Absolutely. like, and, and then just leverage them as necessary. Exactly. And just one other thing to add, you know, they, they, their portfolio is, is incredible. You know, they, they invest in, in the best companies out there. Um, so they host a lot of great events where you get to interact and meet with other super talented founders and, and folks in, in that ecosystem. So, you know, again, endless opportunities, um, and a limited amount of mentorship and guidance. It's, 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 a, you know, they're a great, great company. Right. Well, let me let me ask you guys one last question before we go. Um, you know, where other than other than the DigitalOcean homepage, where is a good place that you know if people are out and about in the community at meetups at events, like where are you guys going to be? What's a good way to get in touch with you? You know, and or you know, what's the easiest way to sort of get started using the using the platform? So you can go to our meetups page um, in our in our community um, on our community site. So it's digitalocean.com slash community and just click meetups on the t- on the top in the in the nav um, and you can look for upcoming events. We have meetup groups in various cities around the world. Um, so you can start there and typically we we offer up promo codes, uh, you know, promotional um, credits for for new users to join our platform. Um, so I would I would you know, look for those. Okay. Very cool. Well, listen, uh, guys, thank you so much for the time that this has been great. Uh, you know, folks, you know, like, like we've always said, we're, we're trying to show you guys sort of everything that's out there in the cloud community. DigitalOcean is, is growing like crazy, um, doing a lot of things, especially, you know, around developers, around containers, new, new technologies that are out there. So, you know, definitely uh, something to go take a look at, um, something that like they, like they said, it's incredibly simple to get started and incredibly, you know, once, once you're on the platform, really, really powerful technology. So, uh, you know, Mitch and, and Nick, thanks so much for the time today and, uh, appreciate you being on and folks, we will, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 